Dr. James Brown, take one. Okay, Okay. so uh, Jim, tell us, um, how did you originally get interested in uh, boys' education? Well, I, I go back a long way with, with education, and, and I, I go back a long way in teaching. Um, uh, it's been apparent for a number of years that um, essentially the school system is set up for women teachers to teach little girls. I mean, I, I've made that statement. I made that statement 20 years ago, so it's not like. Uh, now, granted, I took a lot of heat for making that statement, but mm, but sure. it's uh, it, it is realistic. That's part of what what it's about, and it's become more obvious. And and some of the research I did over the years, and and as now I've now written up, um, demonstrates that the fact that boys are um, boys are really uh, disadvantaged. In, in our school system, the way it operates. So, yeah, I've been interested in that, and, and then I did I did I did an, a, quite a bit of research on it in terms of my own uh, interest in my own education, and um, and. I mean, you had it, seen it firsthand, right? I, I should be said you were a I, teacher, you were yeah, principal. I, I, For how I, many years were you in well, the school I, system? Well, I, much as I hate to admit it, forty nine years. Wow. Well. Quite a career. Well, I'm saying 49 up to today. That's what I'm saying by 49 years. No, I was in the, I was actually directly involved in the schools up until about seven years ago. Although I still teach music on a <laughs> once a week basis, so uh, I'm still involved in that sense. But for me now, it's a, uh, it's a case that uh, we're going to look at the situation 10 years from now, and we're going to say, how did this happen? Because see, it's already happening, and. Uh, the, the analogy I draw is that when, a, when the government of Ontario decided that it needed to do something about uh, uh, doctor's fees, it decided to reduce the number of uh, spaces in, uh, in medical schools. And then, of course, 10 years later, we're short of doctors. So we decided we better increase the number, but it takes 10 years to, to regenerate. Gotcha. Yeah, and so that's the reality we're looking at in, in in what's happening in schools, we start to see the the dilemma now, and we're seeing it uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, boys in elementary school, boys in secondary school, even boys in university now, and uh, boys in professional schools. Um, so we're aware that it's taking place, and if we allow this to continue for another ten years, we're going to have a major problem on our hands, a major societal problem. I don't just mean a major problem in terms of the boys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're going to be in a situation where we're going to say, how did this happen? Now, this is really an interesting feature for you, as a, speaking to you as a young man. Um, I not only have to be concerned about what happens to my sons, I have to be concerned about who my daughters are going to marry. Now, that may be a bad statement to make, but the reality is, whether they marry them or, or partner with them or whatever, um, if, if they will have men in their lives. That's right. right. And and if and if my daughters are well educated and 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 so on and and, and have high paying jobs and the guys they uh, uh, become in, involved in relationships with are uh, living in their parents' basements and uh, our school dropouts uh, because that's all the only guys that are around, um, that does not augur well for a successful relationship. And um, so we need to be, I'm, I'm speaking as a parent now, yeah? you need to be thinking not only about what's happening to, to your son, but you need to be thinking about, hey, what implications does this have for my daughters? But to go beyond that, because this is really a, a key for me, we look at professions, uh, and an example would be uh, the medical profession. Well, we know that uh, women doctors work about 20% fewer hours than men doctors do. So unless we're going to have 20% more doctors, if, if our medical profession becomes predominantly women, we're going to have a doctor shortage hmm. because that's just a reality of our society. It's not going to change overnight. It might change someday, but not overnight. If you look at veterinary, the veterinary situation, almost all the vets now are women, and the, the veterinarians who are women largely are small animal vets. Well, where does that put you if you're a, a farmer and you, and you now need to call it a vet? Well, it's almost a sure thing that that a, the small animal vet that is working in the city is not going to want to go out to the country, wait around in in, in the rain in the muddy in the mud and try to birth a cow. Right. It just right. isn't going to happen. So those are, I mean, these are societal Some issues factors. That sort of slip through oh the yeah, they do, and people about don't think about these yeah. things, but they have they, they are they are fundamentally important to yeah. all of us, 
And as I say, 10 years down the line, we're going to look at it and say, well, how did this happen? Well, look around yourself. It's happening right now. So you've laid out some uh, really important concerns, especially with yeah. respect to boys in the school system, and you've, you've now written a book on the subject, yes. you've, you've toured yeah. and lectured on the subject. So uh, I'm really curious to know if you're optimistic, if you're, if you're hopeful that things are changing, that things you know, are showing some, perhaps some early signs that, that uh, people are starting to get it. If, if you're asking me on, a, on, a, on a, a level like the school system, whatever, no, I'm not optimistic at the moment on this at all. But what I am optimistic about is this center. I'm optimistic about the fact that men's issues are becoming more mainstream. I'm optimistic about the fact that, that this year, I'm at my Movember mustache, <laughs> and most people recognize it. When I first started doing it, nobody recognized what it was. So the fact that people now are aware of it tells me that people are more conscious of men's health issues yes. than they were three or four years ago. Yeah. I was in, the, in elementary school just this past week, and the children every Friday wear cardboard mustaches. Really? During November? During November, yeah. And so, the, so the, for me, that tells me that this is now becoming more mainstream. And as people are become more conscious of it, you, you, you have fewer people saying, oh, yeah, but, you know, like, Women's cancer's issues are, are the serious ones. Mm -hmm. Well, prostate cancer, ready for this. Well, that's the good kind of cancer. I was told that to my face. That's the good kind of cancer. You have the good kind of cancer. Lucky you. Lucky me, yeah. I'm thinking, excuse me, this is the good kind of cancer? Thanks a lot. Because the impression is, number one, this isn't a serious cancer, and it's not, and it, and it's not debilitating. It doesn't have any any uh, apparent side effects, and you're not likely to die of it. All of that's wrong. Well, as we become conscious of the fact that the, the incidence of, of prostate cancer in men is, is equal to or greater than the incidence of breast cancer in women, the death rate is, is equal to or higher, and of course the side effects are even more startling for men mm -hmm. than, than the loss of a breast is for women. As that, becomes, that knowledge becomes more mainstream, as it becomes more well understood, um, people are going to take these issues more seriously. The center here is a, a marvelous beacon. It's a marvelous personification of, of the ideas that we've talked about, you and I have talked mm -hmm. about, and, and all the other people that are involved here for a number of years now. We've talked about it, it uh, conceptually, and we've talked about how can we make a difference. Well, one of the ways to make a difference is that, in fact, there is an actual physical a personification of this, and people like yourself um, come to be recognized. When when uh, when you are interviewed on the radio, people know who who you are. Well, we'll speak more to this idea that yeah. actually building a center, building like a yeah. what we how we describe it as a safe, you know, affirming yeah. place for boys, men, and their families. Why is that such an important uh, milestone? Why is that such an important piece of the puzzle for making a long term difference? Well, it, it's important because. Uh, if I want information about something, just for example, I, I arrive in a in a city that I don't know, and uh, and I'm I need to find something. Well, if there's a police officer directing traffic or whatever, I have no hesitation to say that police officer will probably know where I, where what I'm looking for, or can direct you to, or can direct me to it. Yeah, this will will be aware of that. So. When there is no physical center, when it's all all nebulous, mm -hmm. um, then if it, it, where do I go to find the information I want? And and you know you can say, well, uh, yeah, you can find it on the website or whatever. Fine, but but you're also presuming that a lot of us have that kind of technical expertise. But a lot of us don't. I mean, the reality is, you know, okay, maybe I can find it, but a lot of my friends can't. What do you think about the community aspect of having a space where, well, today, for example, people get together, they talk about issues, they find others of like mind? Um, do you think that that makes a real uh, long-term difference in, in building this movement for men's health and well-being? One of the one of the fellows was saying to me that he attends a lot of the sessions, as I try to do, yeah, and partly because because. Um, the community needs to come together and share. It's, it's not enough for me to say, uh, at one time in my life I was a Cub Scout. If I never go to a Cub Scout meeting, mm -hmm. I'm not a Cub Scout. 
I lose all the momentum, I lose all the, the camaraderie, I lose all the affirmation, I lose, lose all the connections. And no, I know we're not talking Cub Scouts, but the fact of the matter is, this is a place where people can come, can talk to one another, can, um, and, and do it safely, and, and do it knowing that the person they speak to has walked in my shoes, because it's a different set of shoes than other people are walking in. So, so I can speak, even, even, uh, even though we're talking, you and I are talking generationally different here, the fact of the matter is, you've walked, you've, you've walked, I've walked in a lot of the same steps that you're walking in, and including about five kilometers in the process. That's walk, true, right? yes. <laughs> in the rain, <laughs> yes. typically. So, so the reality is that, that as we do that, it becomes a place where um, I can talk to people safely, I can talk to people who will understand what I'm talking about, and I will go away feeling re-energized mm -hmm. by this experience. And, and for no other reason than the fact that, okay, we came here, we talked, we shared, we... And, and it's, um, um, when you get to my age or older, uh, and you, you, you can see this, you'll, you'll go to a mall or you go to wherever, and you'll see the uh, geriatric crowd <laughs> sitting in the Tim Hortons or wherever, and they meet every day. Yeah. Well, they, they need to do that. It's not because it's, it's, uh, it has any uh, uh, particular, uh, that someone can put his finger on and say, okay, I learned this today or I did that. The fact of the matter is, this is a safe place for, for, for them to come. This is a place where they can share with people and they make friends mm -hmm. and they learn from each other and they get support from one another. And, and uh, uh, this is a place that, this is a vehicle. It's a place that provides that. When the discussion came about, about uh, actually doing this, and this, I thought it was a marvelous idea. I still do. And I'm, I'm certainly totally supportive of it and, and supportive of the people who are involved. Well, my name is, is James Brown, uh, a longtime educator and researcher and parent and grandparent. And I support, totally support uh, the work that's being done here and support this center and the people who are involved in it. Thank you. A pleasure. Thank you. Very good.